Hi, my name is Susan Hamilton, and I'm the host for the BDIC channel on the OBBM network, where you'll find television programming, podcasts, radio, and press release articles, every single thing that we can find to share with our law enforcement, emergency response, and civilian communities about how to have a better relationship, a safer America, and a stronger America when we're working together. Today I'm very, very excited to be talking with Sergeant Betsy Smith. So great to have you here, Betsy. Thank you so much for having me. Well, this has been interesting because we are uh, actually here in a back room at the Blue Dragon Presents the Winning Mind in a Bulletproof Heart Conference, uh, taking some time to, to regurgitate that a little bit after our first full day of speakers. I mean, and we've had so so much information and invited the the as we mentioned law enforcement emergency response and civilians and what you and I were talking about right before we went on was that we had a pretty good uh, female turnout we, we had an excellent female turnout and uh, and they were engaged they were excited to be here and uh, and I'm so pleased to to have these women here, and especially the women law enforcement officers, we had women uh, EMS personnel, mm -hmm. and we, of course, we had civilian women. But in talking to the women law enforcement personnel, um, a, a lot of us were reminiscing about how, you know, back in the day in the 80s and even in the 90s, women police officers would go to a, a training event like Blue Dragon Presents, and there'd be one or two or maybe three of us. And now I think that we topped today the actual national average of American law enforcement officers who are female. We're about 10 to 12 percent of uh, American law enforcement officers, and I think we topped that today in the audience, and they were eager to hear what everyone had to say. Well, thank you. I, I'm, I'm excited about that. I thought our, our presenters did such a fabulous job. Uh, Betsy, you have 29 years experience as a police officer in the Chicago suburbs, and that's after you already ran dispatch. I mean, you have been at this your whole life. So, uh, you, uh, my goodness, you turned 16 and went to work <laughs> for America on so many levels. What types of information did you think were really beneficial for this community and why? I wonder if you could share a little bit of feedback on that. I think today we heard and saw so much that is not only valuable to our first responders, but valuable for the community to know. Very often yeah, our community it. members, you know, when you're just a citizen, like I am now because I'm retired, you know, we kind of live in our own little bubble. And, you know, we maybe watch some TV, see a little news, see what's going on on social media. So much of what we heard and saw today was so valuable, not just for our first responders, but for our citizens as well. Because we very often as citizens, you know, we're kind of in our own little bubble of, of you know, what's happening in our community or our own home. And today we had information that some was local, and a lot was global. And it was things that I, citizens want to know about. You know, we, right now, if you're a police officer, you you hear a lot of, oh, our citizens hate us. Mm -hmm. In reality, our citizens love That's us. That's true. Every law enforcement officer needs to understand. And, you know, everybody loves the firefighters. You know, they, <laughs> as my husband's fond of saying, the firefighters save daddy, we take daddy to jail. But when you look at uh, the studies that are done every single year, overwhelmingly American citizens love and appreciate their law enforcement. And, and I think that was very clear today from the feedback we got from the citizens in the audience. For a citizen to take time out to attend an event like mm -hmm. this, that, that right there shows the love and concern for first responders. I love that. You know, some of the things that I thought were so, so relevant and timely for today, understanding gangs. You know, so many times our, the youth in our community, and of course our market is the, is the local family business on the OBBM network. And we know that that's a very patriotic vein and most of those uh, family businesses support uh, law enforcement because they have them in their family or mm -hmm. workspace on some level or, or military. And so we can, we can kind of combine these thoughts and ideas with 
with it. But what we're seeing is we've got kids out there uh, in our communities that may not realize they're wearing gang signs. They right. may not realize the severity of what they're hooking up with uh, when they adopt these certain attitudes. I thought it was interesting to learn that some of those, the musical artists are actually, there's, they are members of these gangs and they're talking specifically about the murder and death and rape of other gangs. Yep. And, and all of those things I thought was interesting. Some of the feedback about what those tattoos meant, oh my goodness, we need to, to realize how close that is. And then to everything from situational awareness and positioning to what it means to be an American, yeah. to kick it off yeah. with how to be an American, what, what it means to be an American, to, to respect freedom, because so many times people look at us as we have been looking at ourselves through the eyes of media, through the eyes of social media, through the eyes of the education of our youth today. That that we are there's so many things wrong with America. Well, every nation needs work, but we are a free nation. And we yeah. are unique. And that that's something. If you're if you're a, a business owner in America, you own a business in a unique atmosphere that no one else in the world is allowed. I, I'm a small business owner. And, and we have privileges, we have rights, we have things that, that we can do as business owners that most uh, people in other countries can't. We travel around the world and, and do our law enforcement training. And what we see in certain parts of the world, and then when we come back home to the United States, wow. It's, yeah. And I hope everyone understands how our freedoms in the United States are truly unique in this world. They are, they are. And, and then when they even covered PTSD, before we were done, we got to, for the civilians to hear what the officers are being trained, I think also softens hearts towards each other. And one of the things what we've been saying is, is when you see a real face and a real heart, right. but it's on both sides of the badge because we need to know that we can trust our law enforcement to have our backs as parents dealing with these issues in the community too. And I think we get so much of traditional news media and we really don't know what's going to happen when we experience a critical incident in our own family or our workspace. And that's the thing is we live in a soundbite world. Right. And, and so as consumers of information and consumers of news, we get little tiny bits of it. But at an, at an event like this, at a Blue Dragon Presents event, we get more of the real story not just the soundbite. And, and that's where our citizens can watch this and, and consume this information and say, wow, you know, next time I see that police officer at a meeting or they come into my store or I have to deal with them because my kid has not come home and it's two in the morning right. and he's 14, I have a different perspective. Or 17 or 21. I mean, it's a different right? world out there today. Yeah. And we have got about a 30% addiction rate, probably in Dallas County, uh, where I'm from. It's mm -hmm. probably about 50%. It wouldn't surprise me one bit uh, for what we're seeing there. And that, it's, it's exciting that you're taking uh, the approach that you are for training in the law enforcement community. I'm excited about the history that you have and that you bring to the table here as a woman, as the most well-known woman in uh, trainer in this space. I mean, wow, you're really opening doors uh, for women just ac across the board, but you also represent a perspective that's so healthy and necessary. We need to have a winning mind. <laughs> we do. I'm excited to hear everything that you've got uh, coming to and, and, and share everything that you're offering through the Winning Mind Tour that you, that you have been doing, your seminars. But you've got other seminars. You've got some other things. As you mentioned a second ago, you are a small business owner. So talk to us a little bit about that so we can support you in that effort. Well, I'll tell you, as a, as a police officer, I never thought I'd own a business. You know, I, since I was 16 years old, I was working as a government employee. And now uh, for about 10 years, I've owned a business. And, and it's, it's fun and it's unique. It has its difficulties. And one of the things that we've learned is, is we've got to take a hard look at the market and see what our clients, first responders, truly need. And then also what our civilians who work in first responder organizations truly need. So to that end, we do classes for uh, 
first responders uh, who are dispatchers. We call them the forgotten first responders. So important. And, yes. and, you know, and they don't get the, the kind of after critical incident care that we now know the police officers and firefighters and EMS workers need. Yeah. We're trying to change that. Okay. Um, and so we have a class called uh, the forgotten first responders. We have another class called career and officer survival for dispatchers where we, we help them look at their lives as a true mission. And that, that sense of mission goes throughout all of our training events, whether it's the winning mind, the winning mind for women, the winning mind unleashed, where we talk about deadly force incidents. And the class that's hot right now for us is the truth about gender differences. And it's a fun class. It's a scary class. <laughs> no way. You know, it's, I mean, it's a, especially for, I've got to say, for guys yeah, to oh, walk yeah. into a class called, and I've had men walk in, and we do it to all government employees. We also do it for the private sector. To have men walk in and go, I'm here for the man bashing class. Oh, no. Because <laughs> that's what they think it's going to be. And, and I'll tell you, our passion for that started when I was going to uh, every major police women's conference around the country. I'd been going for years as a speaker. And I heard a lot of man bashing. Did you? And it frustrated me yeah. because I thought, you know what? I go to work every day. I put on a gun and a badge. I risk my life for my community and for my brothers and sisters. Those guys I work with put on a gun and a badge and they go out there with me side by side and risk their lives. Why are we bashing them? They're my brothers. And so we started to do research on, because you hear a lot of, you know, when men, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But there's science behind our differences. Yes. And when you explain the science, it opens up amazing doors. Then we took that to our police spouses and partners. If you can understand how, say, I'm, I'm married to a, a police man, I understand that uh, I've got 20,000 words I got to get out. He's got a limited capacity to hear those mm -hmm. 20,000 words. That's when I need to call my daughter or my girlfriend or my cousin. Uh, but And he communicates very differently. He hears me differently. Yes. And as a police supervisor, my female shooters are different than my male shooters. Women wear different clothing than men. And, and I was talking to one of our women today at the Blue Dragon Presents event. And she said, yeah, have you ever had to wear men's pants? I'm like, oh, yeah. These are things that law enforcement, I know it's 2018. We're just starting to understand some of these physiological differences as well. So the truth about gender differences is a lot of fun. Well, it's, it's you know, it's got to be when you're trying to get into or be made aware of in certain industries. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a first time, right, when you've mm -hmm. got, and it takes years to really get used to that. Well, then you kind of, you, you, so you fight against those things. And, you know, the military has gone through that, too. Absolutely. You know? And Absolutely. then you've kind of got to go back to, okay, now who am I and where do I fit mm -hmm. in? Because well, I have unique talents and strengths that I need to capitalize on if we're really going to have mm -hmm. uh, great relationships across the board that are intentional. Yeah, absolutely. And that, one of the things that we found um, from a business perspective is to keep it fresh. You know, you've you got to make sure that we are our research is current. It's up to date. We're changing our PowerPoints and our presentations and our videos. And and then we bring a lot of enthusiasm every single time, because that's one of the things in business is it, it might be your 50th person you've dealt with today or it might be my 10,000 student that I'm talking to today. But for that student, it might be the first time they've ever heard me. Yeah. And I want them to be blown away. And, and that is, that's typical in business. But sometimes we get, uh, it, things become rote in any business. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I think it's that's another true. day. Oh, it's mm -hmm. another. And, and so th that's something that we've learned is to really bring it fresh every time, every session, every day. Oh, I love that. And that's going to be such a huge asset. Friends, I urge you to reach out uh, to Betsy Smith. How can, they, how can they find you? You can go to www.bucksavage.com or you can also go to femaleforces.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, uh, just Google us. Google Betsy Smith, Google Dave Smith, Google JD Buck Savage, 
if you want to smile. <laughs> and I think that's wonderful because we are enjoying having you and your husband, Lieutenant Dave Smith, uh, share the Blue Dragon stage and get this message out and really make a difference in these communities. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that. I think it's important also, before I let you go, to just remind you that we know who you are. And we <laughs> are not, we know that we are not going after the startup community. We're going after people that have been in business 15, 20 years and maybe have uh, been looking at digital like, wow, it's moving too quickly and I'm not really mm -hmm. sure how to navigate that space. Well, that happens to be quite a few of American sure. businesses. Mm -hmm. That happens to be 80% of American yeah. micro to small businesses that, that's really struggle in that space. So take that to heart because she's right. Keeping that fresh for your particular market, it's too easy to get into a rut and say, this is what I do, this is what I provide, this just because this is what I, I've done. Take a look at it. If that's what's been going on for the last 10 years, you might find some serious success on, on uh, ramping that up and taking a fresh perspective and taking that advice. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching the BDIC channel. My name is Susan Hamilton, and you'll be finding more interviews and spotlights uh, concerning the Blue Dragon Presents tour on the BDIC channel, and we're looking forward to keeping you informed about what's going on in the law enforcement, emergency response, and civilian communities today. Mm -hmm.